Hello and welcome to Asha USA speaker series. My name is Saili Amrapurkar and I welcome you to this month's uh, interview. As you know, Asha USA is a nonprofit organization which uh, focuses on fostering health and harmony in the South Asian community. And Mental Health Matters is one of our important initiatives where we focus on creating awareness and fighting the stigma associated with mental illnesses. So today we have with us a very special guest, a young guest, her name is Tara Verma. Hello, Tara. Hello. And uh, Tara is a senior in high school and she's here because she's doing some very important work in the area of teen mental health. And as we all know, that uh, teenagers and especially middle school and high school students have been going through a struggle during and past COVID um, uh, in various ways. And so we are going to chat with Tara to find out what she has been doing in terms of mental health. So Tara, we welcome you to this platform. And we would like to start by asking you to say a few words about yourself. Uh, introduce yourself. Thank you so much for the introduction. Again, my name is Tara, and I'm a senior in high school at Blake. And I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to be a part of the Mental Health Matters Initiative at ASHA. And I'm really passionate about mental health, specifically for teens, just as it is so relevant at this time and is affecting so many of us. Some of my past initiatives on mental health have included presenting school-wide um, presentations, including on the racial disparities within mental health, including cultural stigma, which is also very relevant within the South Asian community. I've also wrote and presented a uh, research paper on school response to mental health crises at the University of Pennsylvania, and I'm currently helping teach freshmen about mental health related topics um, in health class. And now I'm really excited to be able to talk about the app I most recently created to help teens with their mental health. Okay, so what is the name of this app? And can you tell us a little more about how it works? So the name of the app that I have co-developed with my friend in peer, Sienna Pradhan, is called Feel Now. And its main goal is to help teens track their emotions. We believe that People ask the question, how are you doing very often? And I think it's really hard for us to find a true and genuine answer to that question, just as we're not used to having that emotional awareness. And the goal of this app is to build emotional awareness for teens. And we believe that this is the first step to having better mental health. Without being able to identify your emotions, I think it's really hard to work on them and work on how to cope with them. And so we help do this in a really easy, fun, and friendly way. With just a few taps, teens can select what emotions they're feeling that day and select the intensity. And over time, you're able to look at your emotions and try to see if there are any trends within them that can hopefully um, help you just have a better sense of where you're at emotionally. And we do this by having random timers each day that tell you this is your time to complete your feel now evaluation, which is similar to the app called Be Real. It's a popular teenage social media platform. And we wanted to incorporate some of the features of social media to really engage a teen audience. And we hope that this will help teens stay accountable and do it every day. And it also allows you to add friends to the app. So you can see when your friends complete their um, emotional log after that timer goes off. Um, you can't see the other person's emotions as we wanna maintain a level of privacy and boundaries between friends, but we're hoping that this can help friends hold each other accountable. Additionally, through the use of streaks, when both friends complete their feel now for a given day, they can build streaks, which is another feature on Snapchat, which is also very popular among teenagers. Overall, we just want the app to be a really easy way that teens can just check in with their emotions, no writing, and hopefully this can help increase user retention over time. Okay, so it's called Feel Now app, and yes. you said it's available anywhere kids can buy other apps, like uh, so on Play Store, for example. Yes. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, is it free or is there a small fee to use it? Um, the app is completely free to download. There's no ads. There's no premium subscription. It's available freely on the App Store and on Google Play Store. The goal is really just to make these mental health tools accessible to everyone, and we just didn't want cost to be a barrier. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, so uh, what inspired you to do this work or to actually come up with this app? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so this app is actually based off of my personal experience. Uh, I've been in therapy for several years, and this is one of the tools that I gained through um, my therapy experience. It actually began with an emotion wheel, uh, on paper, rainbow emotion wheel with outer, broader emotion categories such as happy, sad, angry, um, sad, uh, scared. And from there, they had more specific emotions that you could pick from. And I just thought that this was a really useful exercise to start off the therapy session and just figuring out how I was truly feeling. Because sometimes I feel like our emotions on the outside are not actually what we're feeling. Sometimes we feel angry, but what we're really feeling is vulnerable or we're feeling threatened or frust frustrated, betrayed. Right. And I thought that this was a really useful tool. And I think without understanding what that true emotion you're feeling is, I think it's hard to be able to cope with that emotion in the future. And I remember this being a useful exercise. And I have lots of friends and peers who are struggling with mental health and not all of them are getting this professional care that I was privileged and lucky enough to receive. And so thinking about this, I knew that a lot of the experiences that I had, I thought could be relevant to other kids my age who are also going through similar mental health struggles. And I thought that if I have this experience, maybe it could help someone else in my position too. And that's how I got this idea for an app, a way to make my tools and my experiences more applicable and accessible for other teens who maybe don't have this level of professional care. And in no way is the app meant to replace or supplant any type of professional mental health care, but hopefully this can be a tool to assist people no matter where they're at in terms of their mental health journey. And I wanted the app to be wildly accessible, right? I can only tell so many people about the things that have helped me, but I think an app allows people in all sorts of circumstances, locations, et cetera, to be able to use these tools. And I wanted it to be something easy. As a teenager, I knew that journaling, for example, that's been recommended to me, that's been recommended to lots of others in my position, is something that typically you stick with it for a few days, you think, wow, this is great, but then it just falls off after time, because I don't think it's always a sustainable route for a lot of people. And so I wanted something to be really easy. You just tap which emotion you're feeling, it's on your phone, it's saved. The app even tells you when to do it each day, adding some variation to it. And the goal was really to make sure that it was targeted towards teens and that it was something that people would actually want to and be willing to use uh, over time. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, what age group can kids start using this app? I believe 13, just due to some data and privacy regulations, 13. But it's really meant for you. So all, minors can definitely download the app. Really, the app is meant for probably Teens. 13 to yeah. people in their 20s. Although, assuming you know how to use technology, it can be used by any age group. Because um, mm -hmm. I think all yeah. age groups do like to use apps that are easy to use and don't require much time. I don't think that's unique to teens. I just think that is something that teens is a bigger barrier for teens. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's... That totally makes sense. And the fact that you made it at your age, I think many kids your age will be able to relate to what you're trying to do here. Uh, so Tara, do you have the app on your screen right now? Maybe we can see a little bit as you walk us through. We would love to see how this app works. Yes, of course. So I can actually show you the App Store preview, which shows okay basically the screens of the app before you were to download it. Let me pull that up real quick. Mm 
Right. So once you sign up and create your account, uh, this is the first screen that you're going to see, which you can essentially, as the emotion wheel would have, you can pick from six larger emotional categories. And from there, there's 10 sub emotions that are a little bit more specific to describe how you're feeling. You can tap on this emotion and then you're able to set the intensity, right? Because we acknowledge that not every emotion that you're feeling, you're going to be feeling equally. So you can set it at slightly, moderately, or highly confident, amused, curious, etc. And you can add up to five emotions per day. We want to encourage users to be mindful and think how what specific emotions you're really experiencing. And after that day, you can view your emotions um, in a daily setting. You can also view on a weekly setting in which it shows the emotion that you're feeling most intensely and most strongly. And you can see this a little bit in the monthly graph where it shows you a calendar for the month. You can also see your month uh, in graph where it shows you on net, are you feeling more positive emotions, which are happy, uh, peaceful versus more negative emotion, emotions such as scared, angry, um, disgusted, etc. And then right here, you can see in green, yellow, and gray, your friend status. So after the daily alert comes each day, say maybe it's at 10 a.m., who all has done it first? They come up in green if you've done it within, I believe, 10 minutes of the notification. Who's done their evaluation late or who's not done it yet? And the numbers you can see next to each person show the streak that you have with this given individual of how many days both people have completed their feel now evaluation before the next days come out. And then you can also invite more friends from your contacts or by searching up their username uh, to add to the number of friends that you have on the app. And essentially those are the features. Uh, yeah, so I have a few questions as I'm looking at this. So first of all, uh, what about confidentiality? So can I right. see my friends' uh, status as to what they are rating themselves on for that particular day? Or maybe a parent can see, or is this data downloadable so that you can look at the whole month and you know do some work with it? Right. So privacy was at the forefront of our concerns when doing this. We wanted to make sure that your personal data was just for you. So John, for example, in this um, thing, all you can see is that John completed their evaluation at 2.37 p.m. You cannot see what emotions that any of your friends um, are experiencing. And then for each, in order to view your data, you can't download the data, but if you look at the monthly view, you can see the main emotions you are feeling each day, but it won't show you the specific uh, emotions for that month. It'll show more the month um, more holistically. Okay, so it's totally private. Nobody else yes. can see, which is right. really Except good. For yourself. Yeah, um, that's wonderful. So uh, let's stop sharing. Uh, and my next question is, what are you planning to do next? You said you are a senior right now. So what are your plans uh, next with this app and in general? So my goal right now is really to just help spread awareness of the app, because I think the app can only really be useful if people are aware that it exists. And so right now I'm currently working with several news publications and hopefully we'll get a story with the Star Tribune, um, Edina Magazine, the Edina Community um, Education Foundation are some of the news publications that I'm working with um, to be featured in an article. And hopefully that will help uh, increase awareness about the app. I'm also connecting with social media platforms such as MNT Activists. I just released a post with them today. Um, and hopefully by collaborating with other nonprofit organizations on social media, a platform that is already um, a big place where teens spend a lot of their time, that can hopefully help increase um, awareness as well as Feel Now's own social media. We have an Instagram and TikTok that we just started launching. I'm also working with my school right now um, to hopefully help promote this among Blake. And I would like to see if I could potentially partner with other first independent schools in the area to hopefully raise awareness there as well. And in terms of the app, 
originally when I came up with this idea, there were some other features that I wanted to include as well. And so I think the next step after I help spread awareness on the current features we have would be to expand. And my current idea for that is to have a memory box. I'm not sure if you all are familiar with that idea, but I have one in my closet. It's where you hold special memories, art projects, maybe medals, um, awards, pictures with friends, etc. And it was going to be a place where you could hold fun pictures, videos, TikTok, sounds, um, or music. And you could have that all in one place. Because I think sometimes we just need a reminder, especially when we're feeling down or um, just in the blues. I think it's helpful to be reminded of all of the good and positive things in our life. And it would also be a place where you could write a note for yourself in anticipation of a time when you might be not feeling your best self. And you could also collect um, voice messages or written messages from your loved ones that you could also read in a time um, where you're where you're just struggling. And that is something that I want to work on more in the future, but currently I'm trying to prioritize um, spreading awareness of what's already there. Wow, that sounds like a wonderful idea and not just for kids and teens, but for grownups, right. for all age groups. It is so important to remember. Um, and uh, I wish you all the best with that initiative as well. Uh, I would go back to your idea about going to different schools and talking to high schoolers about your app. Uh, I think uh, that is very important because when you connect one-on-one -on -one and you tell them, and it's, it's an app, so anybody can just access it on mm -hmm. their phone right then and there. So all the best with that as well. Uh, I would like to ask you before we end this little chat is uh, what is uh, one message that you would give to today's um, high school kids, let's say, uh, about taking care of their mental health, other than using this app, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one message that that's difficult because I have a lot of things I, I could say. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Yeah. But I think first, general our culture around mental health, I don't think is okay. I think it is way too normalized to be continuously feeling depressed, to experience suicidal ideation. That's not normal. And that's not a place that you should just accept where you are. And things can get so much better. And I hate that it's so prevalent among today's youth that we've just started to accept it. And I think a lot of that comes with the stigma around mental health. And I just want to emphasize that I really think that speaking up is a sign of strength and not a sign of weakness. I think we all have a lot of fears about what are people going to think if I ask for help? Are people going to think I'm lazy or that I'm weak? And I think that to be able to be vulnerable and to ask for help is so important. And I think it's a sign of, of courage. And I think that a lot of people have like internalized their mental health struggles as character flaws, right? As like lazy, as unmotivated, as, uh, you know, attention seeking. And I really want to emphasize that you deserve help. No, no matter, no matter, no matter what, I think everyone deserves help, no matter what mistakes you've made, um, what your circumstances are. And I think what I've really noticed among my peers especially is that the only way to get better is you have to want to get better. I think internally, not getting better for someone else. I think you need to want to get better. And only then are tools like therapy and medication, et cetera, going to help. I think it comes from an internal desire to want to get to a better place. And I think a lot of times people just feel like they're going to feel the way they're feeling forever and that it's not going to end. And that's a really difficult feeling, especially when it does take a lot of work to get help. And I just want people to know that it's not always going to feel that way and that there are things that you can do to help your own mental health. And I think a lot of times when we truly want it for ourselves, that the future really is better. Wow, we really need passionate, smart, enterprising women like you 
to take up such causes so that not only youth but everybody benefits tara thank you so much i'm really proud of the work that you are doing and i wish you all the very best uh, with your app and with your future ideas and projects uh, and uh, we want to thank you on this platform of asha usa for coming and telling us all about your feel now app and i'm sure people who see this uh, video uh, will try this app out thank you so much thank you so much for this opportunity thank you